I've been seeing a lot of players making some massive mistakes in Grand Cross Age of Titans. So today we're going to go over seven mistakes that you should absolutely try your best to avoid if you want to become as strong as possible. Now, Grand Cross Age of Titans did just launch globally very recently, but I've been playing the game for at least a month now, and I've seen a lot of players make some big mistakes. Now, if you haven't downloaded the game yet, there is going to be a link in the description below. Give the game a try. I've been having an absolute blast, but I just want to jump into the topic of this video. Okay. And the first mistake that I see a lot of players making, especially very early on in the game is getting into massive wars within your own server. Now I know that this is a city builder game and it is a war game. So it sounds a little bit silly. For me to advise you not to get involved in wars in the early game but the reason for this is very very simple and that is because when you go to war in grand cross age of titans you're going to be fighting other players and a lot of your troops are going to end up in the hospital and healing your troops in the hospital costs resources and that means there is an opportunity cost for waging war for all of the resources that you spend healing down your troops in your hospital these are resources that you're not using to level up your castle okay look at how many resources that this requires 17 million food wood and 7 million stone but that's not even on top of the fact that you also have to go through all of your uh, technology as well right now I spent millions of resources just to start the research announcement level nine here and some of the economic research especially near the end here gets really expensive and of course it goes without saying but the amount of resources it takes to level up and get tier five units also is extremely expensive so in the early game if you get into wars then you're going to be more inclined to focus on your pvp or your battle technology when in reality in the early game you should be focusing mainly on your economy technology because this is what's going to get you more resources that helps you progress your account faster and you're also going to be wasting resources healing down troops for no reason other than simple disputes in your own kingdom also if your alliance and your server is involved in a civil war then that increases the probability that you and your alliance members have your cities attacked okay if you're offline and you don't have a peace shield you don't have a bubble which by the way these territory protections should absolutely be used if you do end up in a war okay you want to just eliminate the possibility of even getting attacked at all but if you fail to do that then your city could get zeroed all your troops could be killed in a rally or a swarm attack they could take all of your resources and that's really going to set back the progress for your accounts and the reason that this is so important in the early game is because eventually there's going to be some form of server versus server game mode where everybody in your server is going to be on the same team fighting up against another server okay and the rewards for that game mode I suspect are going to be very good and you want your entire kingdom to be as strong as possible going into that event so that way when the real wars start you can really go all in now it should go without saying that if you're somebody who's been buying bundles in this game and you've been playing like crazy you're a super strong player then by all means you know go for it go for having some fun little wars in the early game but just know that there is an opportunity cost involved the second mistake we're going to talk about in this video is one that I'm actually guilty of which is how I know that it's a mistake and that is not progressing through the towers so if you guys didn't know or maybe you haven't progressed far enough in the story there's multiple towers that unlock that are essentially PVE game modes they're sort of little dungeons that you can join and each level each stage of this tower has a sort of unique configuration of enemies that you have to defeat in order to progress to the next level and I know that this sounds like maybe it's kind of time consuming and whatnot uh, and it does take a little bit of time but I'm not gonna lie it takes a little bit of time to progress through these and there are some restrictions here as well um like for example the Tower of Distress you can only use uncommon rare and unique heroes which means no legendaries are required which is one of the reasons why I think that this game is pretty free to play friendly to be honest with you because there are literally game modes where you can't use the heroes that some would say are paid to win okay so I think that's really nice it's a nice little touch but the reason that doing things like the Tower of Distress or like the Tower of Glacier or the Tower of Oppression or I could see another tower is over here and one I think is over here as well I can't see through the fog but if you progress through these towers not only do you actually get some really nice rewards and even some cosmetics like the jungle explorer here but you actually get buffs 
to your army you will literally be a stronger player by progressing through the tower okay as you can see here getting to or completing tower floor 16 i was able to get one percent archer attack just straight up just you just get one percent archer attack forever for everything that's it and you can even tap the three little dots in the top left corner to see how many stats you've actually gotten from that tower and if you tap the little eye here it will give you a little bit of a, a couple little tips for that tower but here you can see the sixth bullet point says clearing certain floors activates a buff for territory and world activities from the tower buffs from different towers all stack which is super cool so not only should you progress through the tower of distress but the tower of glacier as well i'm only on floor seven but here you could see on floor six damage dealt to monsters is increased by two percent that's the only thing that i've gotten here but that's great there's a lot of pve content where dealing damage to monsters is like the most important thing it's going to help you progress through other towers right this is a super nice little buff here that you get just by going through and as you can see uh these are all actually even better buffs these are hp infantry attack here and these are just higher percentage numbers than the tower of distress and i imagine that as you progress through the different towers give you more and more powerful buffs so it is definitely a mistake to ignore these towers and to not complete the content here mistake number three is also one that I messed up okay so you guys are learning from all of my failures so if you appreciate that I hope you will drop a thumbs up on this video okay I've been messing up all over the place just that way you guys don't make these mistakes but this is called the operation bunion sweep I the word bunion is hilarious here okay but this is a limited time event that comes around it's around for about four days okay and in those four days you have to do 35 stages of whatever the highest difficulty you can complete is you can only do higher difficulties when you've completed previous difficulties and the mistake here is ignoring this event like I did the last time that it came around because now everyone else in my server has completed this event at a higher difficulty than me and the reason that that is important is because you get better rewards depending on which difficulty you complete okay so for me I've completed this event uh at complete stage 35 okay and once the event is actually fully closed for the server then you're going to get access to all the rewards here three legendary mana stones is really nice but completing this event on the highest difficulty will actually get you up to nine legendary mana stones for free and legendary mana stones are a massive bottleneck for the power of your account okay you want to get as many of these universal legendary mana stones as possible okay this is not a season one mana stone this is a universal legendary mana stone which means you can use it forever on any hero that you want and in case you guys didn't know there is a difference these are season one mana stones these are legendary uh universal mana stones the future of the game will have season two heroes season three heroes etc uh and season one mana stones won't be able to be used on them obviously but the legendary ones will okay so keep that in mind these are some of the best if not the best reward that you could possibly get from any event in the entire game and the operation bunion sweep event is a free way to get a really nice chunk of these every single time the event comes around so always make sure that you complete it on the highest difficulty that you can and not only that but you're gonna get a bunch of resources speed ups and gems here as well and also the legendary star level fragments are definitely a bottleneck as well you need a lot of these and we're going to talk about that later in the video but it's a great event do not skip it do not miss it mistake number four that I see a lot of players doing is investing a ton of universal legendary mana stones or a ton of their gems into a hero that they are probably never going to get the full usage out of and a prime example of that is boom okay I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right I do apologize okay for I'm sorry but this is uh, at least when I started the game this was the first legendary hero that showed up in the limited time summoning event okay the grand summon for Bayom. that's what I'm gonna call him okay now we have Claudia I like Claudia a lot you get her for free at the beginning of the game but uh with Bayom, this hero is actually meant for attacking player cities and really just performing rally attacks in general his second skill here does specify that he increases his rally troop size same thing with his awakening here he also has the siege talent tree okay which is mainly used for attacking other lieges castles so really everything about this hero screams attacking other players or towers or objectives and that is for most of you not the type of pvp content that you're going to be uh, spending a lot of your time doing 
and it's not that great for pve content as well right if you're doing a ton of the different events that come around here uh, you're not going to get a lot of value out of a hero that is made for rallying player cities or rallying other towers uh and so progressing through those events you know with a hero like that it's kind of a waste of your mana stones now if you are one of the strongest players in your server or in your kingdom you're an absolute giga chad then this is a hero for you but for most of you watching you want to skip these heroes that are siege heroes or ones that focus on rallying or uh focus on stationing as well which we could see here for Erdell I have an entire hero guide where I break down everyone in a tier list it's like 40 minutes long so if you missed that video on my channel definitely check it out it's probably linked in the description below as well it's really going to help you out a ton and point you in the right direction but heroes like Melody for example have all skills and stats and talents that are mainly used for open field fighting so whether that's PVE content and event content or PVP content this is going to be a much better investment for your account speaking of PVE content let's talk about mistake number five which is something that sometimes I am guilty of doing as well and that is spending all of your stamina points that recover every single day for free on the monsters out in the world okay uh here you see the little cute little dark elves it's actually kind of adorable I feel bad for attacking them uh but you know spending all of your stamina points attacking the monsters sounds like a good idea because you do get the adamantium which is good for your titan foundry you need to upgrade this but that means that you are ignoring the monster fortresses and this is you you want to allocate a certain amount of your stamina every single day whether it's 50 percent whether it's 30 percent whether it's 70 percent some amount of your stamina should be allocated to monster fortresses every single day because the oaths that you get from these fortresses are an absolute necessity for progressing in your account you literally cannot unlock the tier five units in this game in your academy without getting those oaths okay and the reason for that is because if you come all the way to the end of the battle research over here uh, you'll see that the royal guard the tier five infantry says that the pre prerequisites to getting this are a few other researches and also a level 25 academy okay so getting your academy to 25 has some prerequisites uh, and one of those prerequisites for academy 25 is operation command 25 okay which means that you need these oaths to get operation command 25 in order to even start academy 25 to get your tier 5 units so if you're not defeating those monster fortresses at least a little bit every single day by the time you get to end game you're gonna realize oh my god I need so many of these oaths to get my operation command up to 25 you're gonna feel like you're far away from getting to your five units uh, because it is very time consuming to just sit there and rally over and over and over again and wait for players to join it okay so it is better to just passively spend some amount of your stamina every single day getting these oaths and hopefully by the time you are ready to start pushing for tier five you'll be much closer to that goal and you will come back to this video and thank me and say omniarch you are right i've been doing these fortresses for months and now it's a lot easier for me to get my tier five units mistake number six is massive so please listen up closely okay and we're looking at Sekhmet for a reason, all right? Uh, this mistake is one that I almost made with Sekhmet. I almost did it. And that is wasting your legendary star level fragments, okay? The amount of star level fragments that you need to go from three to four, and then four to five, and five to six is an exponential increase okay you need so many star level fragments to get these last the last two stars that wasting these or this 45 here okay if i bring her to four stars it costs me 45 of these star uh, the legendary star level fragments and what do i get for that i unlock her third skill which increases damage dealt to monsters by up to 70 percent if i choose to invest more skill points into her which i'm not so why would i waste my star level fragments on a hero that i'm probably not going to use 
at least not right now and certainly not in the near future this same thing goes for my Ivan right and I like Ivan I think he is a really powerful AoE hero his third skill here says damage dealt to enemy castles I'm not attacking enemy castles which is something that we talked about earlier in this video so why would I spend 45 stars to unlock that skill when it's not going to do anything for me? Right. And the only reason that you would do that is so that way you could level him up more to unlock his fourth skill, which yes, bonus attack is nice, but then you're talking about how many stars does it take to get the fifth star? It's even more than 45. It's actually insane. It's very, very expensive. And I, I've done it. Trust me. I've already done it for my Claudia. Okay. And I'll be doing it for my Melody very soon, but this is a massive waste of stars. So definitely I would say for most players, for heroes that you're not going to use in the near future, at least for the legendary ones, leave them at two or maybe three stars and just leave it there. Okay until you're bumping up and uh, up against a bottleneck where you can't progress that hero skills at all it is an absolute waste to spend these star level fragments and later in the game when you're trying to get six star heroes you're going to thank me you're going to be happy that you didn't waste those star level fragments on heroes you're not planning on use for skills that are basically useless to you and finally mistake number seven is a very quick and simple one and that is not playing the game on PC when you have the opportunity to do so. And I know that maybe a lot of you guys don't have a PC or you don't like to play games on PC or whatever. You mainly play on mobile and that's fine. But if you are somebody who has a PC and you're willing to give it a try, Grand Cross Age of Titans plays so, so good on PC. It is buttery smooth. It is the absolute, in my opinion, best way to play this game. You can see I'm playing right now on PC. You see my cursor. Okay. There's going to be a link in the description below to download Grand Cross Age of Titans. If you have it on mobile, great, but I highly recommend playing on PC, especially for doing a lot of PVE content or especially PVP content. You want to have the most reliable experience possible. And for a lot of you, your PC might be more powerful and stronger uh, than your mobile device. Okay. So especially for PVP, play the game on PC and yes, you can carry your progress over from device to device. So I can play on my phone and then I can come home and play on my PC and all your progress is carried over. Trust me. Once you play on PC, you will see it is incredible. There's even shortcuts and hotkeys. All right. So I could do control a, and you could see it immediately selects all of my troops and then I can right click and they all go exactly where I want them to. Okay. This is an, a very fast way of controlling your troops and sending them up against multiple targets or moving them around very, very quickly. This is a very, very good habit to get into, especially again, for those big wars, when they do come around, you will want to play on PC. So if you haven't tried it yet, it's probably a mistake give it a try and that's going to do it for the video guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other grand cross age of titans players might see it comment down below any mistakes that you've made in grand cross age of titans that you want other players to be aware of i'm still learning from you guys as well so please let me know i would love to hear from you and if it's a really good tip it might end up in a future video while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a grand cross age of titans video and i do want to remind you guys that there is a link in the description below to download grand cross age of titans for free for mobile or for pc and i do want to thank grand cross age of titans for sponsoring this video generous sponsors like grand cross age of titans help me continue to do what i do here on youtube so i am very very grateful for that and honestly i've been loving the game so much a lot of you guys seem to be really really interested in the game and how it's going to develop and somebody actually commented that it feels like city builder games mixed with Genshin Impact right with the actual art style and that absolutely for me hits the head of the nail the graphic style is so good the hero design is incredible the story is amazing and the music in the game sounds like an old Game Boy Advance game which to me is so nostalgic it's so charming and relaxing I've been having a blast so please consider giving Grand Cross Age of Titans a try with my link down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace